All right, hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. We are live once again for another Tie of the Week Live here on the wonderful world of YouTube. So let's get things rolling here. We're going to check our ground control systems, control, make sure everything is streaming okay. We're going to hit that share button a few times and we're going to tie some flies. How about it? <clears throat> So it's been a wonderful week. Um, this weekend I actually was able to uh, link up with Mr. X regarding uh, this top secret egg pattern, the TSEP as I'm calling it now. Anywho, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a fairly decent meeting. It was kind of nerve wracking, um, but we were able to uh, <laughs> get everything we need for that pattern um, and I uh, did a little recording leading up to the uh, meetup point where the deal went down and everything went smooth I was kind of surprised I was really nervous going into it but yeah don't be scared let's go ahead we got one more minute till we're gonna get things going but before then I need to hit the share button and you should too I think that's uh, that's one of the one of the highest compliments you can give me is hit that share button and of course subscribe and give me that mighty thumbs up button that's right there that like button and But it's been a good weekend. Um, while I was up there, I was able to go to my um, Elks meeting. It was a, a training session for all the incoming exalted rulers for the various Elks lodges throughout the state. And that's always a good time. Did fairly well tossing some bean bags. Apparently I'm really good at that, but I'm not that good at... Uh, keeping track of the score when it comes to the end because if you go over 21 then you have to get reset to 15 and the game that <clears throat> took us out my team out my partner and I uh, we went over past uh, 21 three different times so it was it was kind of intense but let's get things started here let's check in on the chat all right, who do we have here? We have, and we're reconnecting. I don't know why that just cut out on me. So if that does cut out on me, we do end up with a little bit of a delay. I apologize. Not much I can do except for come right back. So usually we run to about seven o'clock central time, time zone, which is where I'm at. And until I give you that final happy tie in and such, just count on me coming back. And a little bit more light to the situation. So we are tying uh, dry flies today. And today we are using Moonlit 052. Uh, these are down to 16s that I'm tying right now. And we are tying, here we go, it is the X Caddis. And I pull this recipe and this pattern directly from a wonderful book. And this book is The Fly Patterns of Yellowstone, Volume 2 by uh, Craig Matthews and John Jerick. Great, great book. If you've heard me preach it once, you've heard me preach it a thousand times. Folks, as, as much as I love doing these YouTube videos, I love books. And you should too. Books are great. I will never discourage anybody from reading Jimmy, this is not too small for you. Um, so according, uh, let's see, how big does this go up to? Because I'm sitting here with the recipe in my lap. And it goes up to a size 12, so. And I tell you what, Jimmy, you tie this and say a size 12, I guarantee you'll catch some panfish on it. How do I know this? Because I've caught, I've landed some chirpy chirpy bluegill and sunfish that's that's 
That's kind of a unique sound. You don't get that trout fishing. You only get it when you're fishing bluegill. Get that little that chatter, if you will. So, anyways, um, the thread I'm using it is a dark brown 70 denier ultra thread. Yeah, we keep saying I keep saying I get a bad connection. says I got full signal go figure but we'll get through it we'll get through it anyways I left a considerable amount of thread um, and we're gonna hang that off to the side we're gonna use that as a ribbing and for the tail I'm going to be using an amber shuck yarn and let's go ahead and just trim off a little piece of that What I like to do is I, I like to thin it out just a little bit, especially when I'm getting down into the 16s and such. We're just gonna take about half of that. And here's a trick to get material on sometimes. Come from underneath the thread and lift it up and around. And without any real effort, I have the material um, with a half a turn on the hook. Make sure we get that positioned right on top. I like to bounce my thread forward and I'll continue to secure. And my kitty kitty's going to cry outside the, the door of my fly tying room. Oh, kitty kitty. All right, I'm going to work our thread back. And for this one, I'm going to just trim that off and be done with it. All right, next we're going to dub on our body. So let's get a little bit of wax on. This is just a hairline dubbing low tack wax. And for a dubbing, I'm actually going to be using a pheasant tail uh, Zelon dubbing from Blue Ribbon Fly Shop. So well, she's going to tear down that door. Hey, Mary, how's it going? So we're doing. We're doing some uh, X caddis right now. Get our start a little dummy noodle. I don't want this relatively tight. How nice and tight the dummy noodle. All right, so I got that little bit of thread before I get to my dubbing, and I don't necessarily want to build up a bump of thread directly at the end. Of the fly so I'll just take those first couple of turns up front maybe just I don't know a few millimeters I'll dub on my body and I got a lot on here so as we know less is more so we'll clean our line off and stop it there and add that back into the mix all right up next let's go ahead and do it let's go ahead and bring our ribbing forward. I'm going to do one full turn on the rear, right over that tail. Hey, pigeon fly tying, how's it going? We'll do one, two, three. I'll do four turns of my ribbing. Nice, evenly spaced, open spiral, and that was a counter wrap that means I wrapped backwards, or opposite of my normal wrapping pattern. All right, here we go. Let's do, oh, let's go ahead and trim that tail a little bit. Tra tail, I'm going to trim off at, I don't know, about half a body's length. Just a little shuck, just a little, just a little bit of goodness in the back there. come in a little bit more there we go all right so let's do our wing this is a deer hair and believe it or not when we flip this over it's for an ax caddis so i'm assuming this was actually uh, acquired at the blue ribbon fly shop this was passed off to me when i first started tying flies by my father um getting ready for our 
first big Montana trip. So I'm just going to start off with a clump and I'm going to clean that out. Just take a second, clean all that junk out. Get the junk out of your trunk. Now I'll come in with a brush. And then I'll come in with the comb and say, ooh, that's nice. All right, now we got that all cleaned out. Tips forward, tips forward into the hair stacker. And we have, uh, my lovely wife has taken a nap. She had to work early this morning, so we won't bang this on the table like you normally would. And let's give it a couple extra wraps. And how about it? Did anybody uh, catch that on my Instagram and Jess's Instagram, her first bass? She got her first bass um, on the Mississippi River on a fly. And that was like last week, Monday. We have the Husing Feld Life. Hello, Josh. Welcome. It appears you are tardy for the party. We start at 6 o'clock, brother. Just saying. All right. Let's go ahead. And this is going to be way too much. That's too much. So I'm going to take a big chunk of that out. Strip that down a little bit. And you know what? I'm actually, since I disrupted all that, I'm just going to run that in the hair stacker one last time. Because I really want these tips to be nice and even. Oh yeah, I will be tying a few of these. Alright, we're going to take my wing. And I'm going to line it up with the end of the hook. And these black fine tips are going to go no further than the shuck of the tail there. I'm going to give my thread a little spin counterclockwise. And that's going to help keep the thread pulled towards the rear. And we'll puff it out. A couple tight wraps. Alright, while that's still on top and everything, I'm just going to fold everything back just take a couple of wraps underneath building a small bump and while that's even pulled back check this out so this is a little straw with a little slit cut into it we're going to slide that up and over and that's going to hold our hair back while we come in with our you guessed it our one two three whip finish And a one, a two, a three. Here we go. Cinch it nice and tight. And trim off our thread. All right, now that we've got our thread clear, look at that. Kapow. What's a whip finish? L O L. That's the secret question to get into the Fly Tires Helping Fly Tires Facebook group. All right, let's go ahead and separate these two a little bit. We'll get the front towards the front, the rear towards the rear. And it's not that difficult to do. There we go. All right, here we go. We're going to trim up the butt section at a little angle, just like so. And that's, um, this is, I think, something worth mentioning to uh, beginner fly tires. If you really want to get in and trim something and you have any kind of shake or unsteady hand so I got this one one here that I want to trim I'll grab my vise and I'll rest my scissors on my thumb and that gives me a little added stability when it comes in to trim finer materials 
so that is one X caddis. Let's go ahead and do another. We'll do another standard X caddis. Let's go ahead and put these ones in our fly boxes. And we'll tie another one. Wasn't that fun, boys and girls? Sure thing. All right, let's go ahead and start this off again. I'm going to take a sip of beverage. So how is everybody? What is, I'm going to ask everybody, what is the last fly that you tied? What is the name of the last fly that you tied? Fresh off the vise. Let's see it. Because for me, you just saw it. This is a Moonlit 052, size 16. All right, Mary was on the zebra midges. Brian is still in prog progress of a Froggy Popper 2.0. I love me a popper. Uh, Brian, please, 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 please throw a picture up and tag me or... Uh, post it on the All Tied Up Fly Tying School uh, Facebook page because I would really love to see it. I love seeing other people's flies. Uh, PJ's got his foghorn. <laughs> I, almost, I almost wanted to call it the foghorn leghorn, but I really like the loghorn. We got a crafty clouser. I'm assuming a crafty clouser is with craft fur. Because I love a, love a good clouser too. Um... I don't think any of those are the craft furs. But yeah, you can't go wrong with a good clouser. Well, let's see. Jimmy's on his double bunnies. That's cool, Jimmy. And you know what? Um, I think you inspired my wife, Jess, to tie a double bunny. Uh, she was asking about rabbit something or another, and I think she saw your picture. Blue craft fur. Now, riddle me this. Why does craft fur have an under fur? You think if we're going to go and make synthetic fur, we could eliminate that part of the process. Anyways, here we go. Dark brown UTC 70 denier. And this has got me nervous. I'm working my way up to it. I got a, got a little hiccup there. Must have been a little, must have been Friday at the factory. But anyways, so we're going to cast on our thread. We're going to add a little bit of extra because we're going to use that for a ribbing. We'll just work that down the shank of the hook all the way to the bend. Set that off to the side. And here we go. Now remember that um, shuck yarn, that amber, there we go, amber, sh amber shuck yarn. Um, we peeled some off and Here's the last bit from the last time, the other half from thinning it out. Because I really don't want too too thick of a, of a tail back here. And I'm going to come up underneath my thread and just set that on the back side. Lock it in with a couple of turns and bump my thread forward. Secure it down up front. A couple of locking wraps. And now we can work our thread back to that main tie-in point. Boom meow. Well, this uh, the recipe for this um, calls for an A-dot. Not quite the super, super duper fine. I'll go ahead and just trim this to length real quick. And that's about a half a body hook gap if you will all right let's get our dub on first let's go ahead and get our wax on just a little bit of low tack wax a little dab will do you get our dubbing ready wax on wax off hello paul hi paul what did the what did the young buffalo say to 
what did the what did Papa Buffalo say to the young buffalo when it left for college? He said bye, son. <laughs> All right. We got our dubbing noodle. And now let's go ahead and make contact and bring that to the rear. And we'll work our way forward. I'm going to stop there. Strip up, up. Blah, blah, blah. Strip off the excess. And put it back in the box. All right. Let's bring our ribbing forward. Which is nothing more than our thread from earlier. I'm going to take one turn just over that tail portion. And I should be able to get one, two, three, four turns of ribbing. And we can secure that off. And we'll trim off the excess. I don't mind giving myself a little bit of extra thread. It helps me hold on to it and it keeps everything... Uh, nice and tight when I bring that forward. Alright, last but not least, we got some deer hair. And I'm just going to pick up the little bits of other half that I already went through. We'll just restack all this madness, get it back into compliance. Is it a Caperidon hair? I don't know. It's labeled as Xcatus L29, LR secret code. Do you see a toaster or a hidden message in there? I don't know. But it works great for the X Caddis. Go figure. Um, I actually, I did try tying one just a little bit ago with... Uh, no, this isn't a large hair. I mean, it puffs out real good because it's Nice and hollow. Here we go. All right, let's go ahead and set our wing on top. Position it no longer than the tail. Really give it a nice pinch. And before I tie on, I'm gonna spin my thread counterclockwise. Just a few turns. That helps keep it nice and tight to my fingers. All right, one, two, three, four turns on that. We'll fold the rest back and we'll do some wraps directly underneath. Kind of pushing that hair up and back. We'll come in with our straw and we'll tame the madness. I have a little, little bit of red marker on there just to help me see it on the bench because it is just a little tiny piece of clear straw. One, two, three turns on the whip. We'll draw that good and tight. And we'll trim that. All right. One, two, three, ta-da! That's a lot of fun. I don't care who you are now, that's a lot of fun. All right, now we'll come in for our little angle slanted haircut. I 
Oh, that'll work. You really only get one shot at it. There's You can't go back and trim up too much. You can trim a little bit off the sides or, you know, the random stray hair. But for the most part, you only get one shot getting it nice and even. So... I am getting used to, I'm trying to really work on keeping the scissors in my hands uh, a little bit more than less now. All right, I'll set this one off to the side. And we're going to shift gears just a little bit. Same basic concept. We're going to use the same hook and the same thread and all that. But this is going to be... Um, the, what do we call this exactly? The improved x caddis or the X2. Um, and we'll go through the slight differences as we uh, tie this in. So, and this is going to be just a slight, slight variation even on my end. Um, because I can't find my white shuck yarn or pair of post wing material just can't find it anywhere I looked for a little while but we'll improvise with the amber let's see if I can't tilt this camera up just a little bit more without there we go all right so this is the X caddis or the improved X caddis uh, with a, just a slight, slight return, a slight variation. All right, I keep having to rub my fingers, keep all this fine. It's so dry in the house right now. Everything just, the moisture and everything just sucks everything in. So here we go. Let's do this. Cast on our thread. And we're going to trim this off. Because we're going to use something else for our ribbing. Take our thread to the rear. And we'll tie in our shuck yarn as usual. And position that nice and pretty on top. And we'll take our shuck yarn forward. And this is where things will get a little different. Because this is actually going to get used as an underwing. We'll just bring our thread back to the rear. Actually, wait, before we go back to the rear, this is where we'll tie in our ribbing material. And for our ribbing material, it'll be some Crystal Flash Pearl. One strand, that's all we need. <clears throat> all right, so we'll tie in our Crystal Flash up front here, and we're just going to run it back as we return to our main tie-in point. And we'll set that off to the side, get that out of the way. And trim off our excess up front, get that yarn out of the way. Boom, oh bye. All right, we'll do our dubbing. And for giggles and grins, we're gonna switch. We're gonna switch from the fe pheasant tail, and let's switch to the, the light tan, the hydroscopy tan. Yeah, definitely the tan. Just a little, little puff. We'll wax our line first. 
a little dab of do ya and the waxed OTAC wax and we'll start our dubbing noodle and we know on this fly at least with this size less is more that's probably just extremely way too much but we'll pluck it off as we get there and we'll slide and a trick to sliding your your dubbing forward put four fingers on the thread and slide the whole bit if you just try to get it closer by pinching up top it'll separate the material but if you just put four fingers on it and add a little bit of tension it'll be crisscross awesome sauce alright we'll bring our dubbing forward take off our excess What did Jimmy say? I just missed it. Uh, yeah, you just lick your fingers like an old man reading a newspaper. Well, I know where my fingers have been. All right, so go ahead and we'll bring our ribbing forward, which is this crystal flash. One strand. And we're going to do this the same as ever before. One turn at the rear. And I'm going to get one, two, three, four. How about it? Nice and even open space ribbing. I'm going to tie this in, in front of that shuck yarn. couple locking wraps and look at that so when I was bringing that this uh, crystal flash forward as you know the crystal flash it's got a twist to it but when I brought it forward I kind of gave it the old untwist with a little bit of tension all right so now we can go ahead and trim everything let's go ahead and trim all this to length we're going to do our little half a body's length or so, hook gap's length, whatever you want to call it. And this top under wing, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna even that up with the tail. <clears throat> Steve Trybowski, welcome, welcome, welcome. You are tardy for the party. Um, but you're just in time for the end of the third fly and the beginning of number four. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. So we are tying right now, we are doing the Improved X Caddis. And we're prepping to tie on our hair wing, our deer wing. Look at all that. You really gotta take your time and clean all that madness out. It really, really helps. Come at it with a brush, come at it with a comb. Good stuff, good stuff. So this is a little bit too much, but we'll split it off. We'll split it off before we stack it. That's about what I'm after. And we'll do tips down in the stacker. I do keep a lot of scraps, but if I kept every scrap, geez, I would have a lot of scrap. I'd look at myself and say, that's too much. All right, so this is our nice little deer hair wing. And we're going to set this on top of our under wing. Give our thread a couple spins counterclockwise. We'll just tie this in like normal. Fold that back. 
and get a couple of wraps on the bare shank of the hook because that's going to help prevent everything from spinning off. Now instead of doing an angled kind of high top cut, we're going to take it all off. Here we go. And a couple turns of thread will clean up all those loose heads. All right, next, what kind of dubbing did it call for the head? We need a hare's ear dubbing, so we'll go into our, our natural. I'm halfway tempted to just use a squirrel. Let's dig out some hare's ear. And that's not the right bin. I believe there is a regular, I believe I do have a regular X Caddis video um, available. Ooh, this is, this is what we're talking about. It's not much left in this lot, but, but I know, but look at this stuff. This is a hair's blend. And we do want a little, little bit of spike in this. So maybe the next one we can try with that squirrel. Squirrel. And a good friend of mine made me the squirrel dub. My best friend, fly time buddy, AKA PJ Pigeon. Let me ask you guys, does anybody else actually talk to another fly tire on a regular basis? Because I do. Pigeon and I, we are always talking back and forth, back and forth. 90% about flies and such, but sometimes we get a little deeper. All right, I have like a mile too much dubbing on this. I'm just going to just take half of this off already. That was just way too much. Because we're just doing a little head up front. Me, me, me. All right, we'll bring this up nice and close. And let's do our little head right up front. And I think that's going to be it. Oh, that kind of exploded on me. Get the dubbing to stick to the thread and not my finger. All right, we are nice and tight to the back side of that eye of the hook. And you guessed it, it's time for one, a two. A three. Pop it out. Make sure it's nice and tight. Apparently I just broke that off. And the whip finish held. Yay! That's how you know you have a good whip finish is if your thread breaks and the integrity of the whole operation does not come undone. And I just got a couple long stragglers on that dubbing train but I like it that's a nice improved X caddis aka the X2 with the underwing all right let's see One and a half finger for head dubbing. Oh well. What? You guys are killing me. I'm like, I'm always like so focused in on to what I'm actually tying. I, 
sometimes I gotta remind myself to look down and see what's going on in the chat. So let's do another one of these. We have time. We can crank these out. Let's do another improved X Caddis. Here we go. That's a moonlit zero five or two. Not an 052, that's a zero five two. The zeros are numbers, not letters. All right, cast on our thread. Will it catch a fish on the first cast? Oh, I'm sorry. The question was, will it catch a fish on the third cast? Well, the real question is, only if it is. The answer is, only if it's uh, Richard Husingfeld, a.k.a. three cast rich. Then again, you could probably cast an empty hook. And catch a fish. Oh yeah, fingers length. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's just like I got it on there and I started looking. I'm like, hello. That's way too much. Hello. All right, let's go ahead and find our tail material, which is lost. Here we go. Let's take a little off the top. This is an amber shuck yarn. And we're just gonna cut off a little bit. And I'm actually gonna thin it out just a skosh. Maybe not quite by half, 60, 40 blend thereabouts just don't get too too thick slide it up and around and I guess at this point you want to just make sure you have enough to once you bring the body forward you have enough to fold back over itself oh this which dimple <laughs> Yeah, um, let's see here. I guess. Does that help? How's that help you, Jimmy? <laughs> I need to get a new, uh, I need, just need to replace this whiteboard. That's all it is for my background. It's just a dry erase whiteboard. Um, maybe I'll just get a cover for it. All right, I'm not gonna try to, not gonna trim that down. I want to keep that intact. I'm gonna bring my thread forward now. Oh wait, before we bring our thread forward, we're gonna tie in our ribbing, our one strand of the crystal flash. See, the thing is, is as much as I really like to support my friends with their stickers, um, if I have the camera zoomed out a little bit or whatnot, there the cameras can see the stickers in the background. Sometimes the autofocus tends to zoom in on those opposed to the fly. All right, we got our crystal flash tied in on the side. And we'll just get that out of the way. Set that off to the side. All right, let's go ahead and do our Xelon dubbing. And we're going to do the Hydroscopy Tan again. I really like that color. And let's get our wax on. Wax on, wax off. So, father of mine, Richard Husingfeld, how did um, tying go with a uh, brother of mine, the fly, or uh, what, do you, what do you go by, the Husingfeld life? 
That's a new YouTube channel for me. I haven't really remembered what it's called off the top of my head. Josh, are you still with me? Are you still watching? Hello? Ah, yes, the Houston Field Life. All right. A little bit of dubbing. He forgot his glasses, but he did okay. Yeah, vision is kind of important. You really have to be able to see. And good lighting. <clears throat> Actually, I bought a new light for the school, school lighting, when we go out, out into the public. And what was really nice is the base of it came with a uh, USB port. And that came in handy when I went out of town. Of course, I bring my vice with me. Might as well bring my new light with me. And I forgot the charging port on my uh for my for my phone so fortunately i was able to use that so my dad sent my brother home to do a dozen black and a half a dozen uh zebra midges yeah he should you know and he pretty much had it last time i was in michigan with you guys um All right, let's bring this crystal flash forward. Do one full turn at the rear of the body. I'm gonna see if I can do one, two, three, four turns. I like it. All right, trim off that crystal flash. And remember, I wanted these both kind of at the same length. I'll just do both at the same time. Shazam! Save a second. All right, let's do our wing. Which is just some deer hair. Uh, recipe for in the book for calls for uh, deer hair or a caribou. So if you have a little bit of caribou laying around, this would be a good opportunity. I think that's going to be us right there. That's going to be us on the bus. want to get too much but we can't clean it too much but it almost looks as if I'm ready to do a parachute post the way that's sitting up there oh yeah pigeon on those cat skills I think between the cat skill and the ten cara style I think you're gonna be busy. All right, let's go ahead and tie this wing on. We'll line this up. A little longer than our tail. Give our thread a little spin counterclockwise or anti-clockwise, depending on where in the world you're from. Take a couple of tight locking wraps. We'll fold this all back. We'll do a couple of turns down there. And we're going to trim this off nice and close. Once we got the bulk of that trimmed off, we'll come through 
that whole mix, work our thread back a little bit, keep our wing up top. Excellent. Now we're going to change it up a little bit. And instead of using uh, the rabbit, we're going to see if we can't use a little uh, squirrel. Let's see what squirrel shell we use on this one. I am thinking with this fly, I'm thinking a little bit. Here we go. The good stuff. Yeah, uh, Josh's Instagram is, um, I believe it's jhusingfeld79. So, all right, we're going to do a little bit of squirrel dubbing on this one, and this is um, the Agent Orange. Just a squirrel dubbing with a little bit of, a little bit of orange mystery madness. But before I do my dubbing, I need to trim a couple of these hairs. A couple butt sections got their way. And the rest I'll take. All right, oh, bump the camera. We'll do a little dab of wax. Oh, does my father have Instagram? No. Nope, no Instagram for him. Need to have him on, on YouTube. He is on Facebook. All right. That's way too much. I have a tendency tonight to grab way too much dubbing. We'll see how this turns out. Nice little tight collar. And we'll trim out some of those long fibers. Overall, I am kind of satisfied with that. So we'll just finish this madness off with a one, a two, a three turns on the whip finish. Excellent. I like that. I'll just trim off a couple of these super long squirrel, super long squirrel fibers. But I like it. Mikey, he likes it. There we go. And one more. There we go. That's a little improved X caddis. Slight variation. Um, and I did notice that I did get a little bit of wax. This might be too big for the... Got a little bit of wax build up from my dubbing that translated into the whip finish. I want to make sure I get that cleared out before I hit the water with it. So let's see if I can run a piece of mono in there. That, this might even be too big. Yeah, let me grab a piece of tippet. That's what I need. Tippet, tippet, tippet. Well, you think you'd have a piece of tippet laying around, wouldn't you? Hmm. Well, 
We'll set that off to the side. Actually, you know what? I think, oh, there we go. There's some smaller. There's something smaller to run through there. There we go. So if I can get this 1X through there, I think we should be good. All right, so I'll have to double check. Double check with me, Jimmy. Um, oh, gosh. No. Wait a minute. I'm confused. Okay, so Dad, uh, Steve Trybowski is not uh, Steve and Mary Steve. Different Steve, same Mary, different Steve. Usually 406 Flyboys would tune in from time to time, but mm, maybe next time. I bet Steve's working, isn't he? Working hard, working hard. So, all right, well, that's going to be a wrap-up for us tonight. Um, coming up next, uh, the next video to be released will be... The Top Secret Egg Pattern, the TSEP. Um, went through a lot of work to get this put together. Um, I did a lot of driving up to my undisclosed location in northern central Minnesota. So stay tuned for that video. Should be a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Well... This is not a Catskill fly. It's straight from the Yellowstone book. Um, but yeah. Oh, the you're talking about my... Uh, no, the top secret egg pattern is not a Catskill fly. It's... it's uh, I'll definitely say whatever the opposite of a Catskill is, that's what this is. It's the opposite of a Catskill fly. So... Yeah, should be a lot of fun. Um, once again, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, next week is going to be a good week. So, happy tying everybody. Tight lines.